welcome to the Redefined Podcast. Okay, happy podcast day. Happy podcast day to you. Welcome to the show if you're brand new. And of course, if you are an existing listener, welcome back. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in and supporting the show. Let's uh, let's get right into it. Um, I want to continue the conversation from last episode where we talked about suffering and how so much of the suffering we experience in life is the direct result of the fictitious problems we create in our mind, right? The Eckhart Tolle quote. Um, and, and so to kind of continue that thread, uh, I want to talk about conflict. And because, I mean, uh, and this is, this is not like, I don't want to make a generalization that the world is coming to hell, going to hell and that it's in complete turmoil. But I will recognize that there is a lot of turmoil and conflict happening in the world, even in, in our own individual lives. Um, the, the amount of conflict has seemed to increase um, uh, as, as, uh, as the years go by. Um, and and I, I want to really make the connection between that the amount of conflict and the amount of time we're spending online and the internet and social media. Now, there's no there's no so, you know uh, 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 research being done. I don't have any I don't have any empirical data or proof. Um, this is just anecdotal and my observation. But I do really believe that there is a direct correlation between the amount of conflict um, that you're experiencing and the amount of time you're spending online. And it is be- exactly because of what we were talking about in the last episode, where um, the narratives, um, the our concept, our our, our, our conceptual conceptual sh- conceptualizations of of life and our experience, um, uh, when when they're influenced by things online, it, it can go completely awry, right? Like like the the armed militia that that uh, is making threats towards female employees, right? Because they bought into a false narrative, and and that false narrative took root in their minds. Um, it created more problems and suffering, and so and so. I, I want to get into first, like the the mechanism of, of how it works and why why this happens, and then and then talk about things you can do uh, to kind of uh, mitigate this and and to deprogram your your. Um, well, it, it's really to become more purposeful and intentional with the with the narratives that that uh, that you're weaving about the reality that you're experiencing, um, and and so. To kind of kick things off, I, I want to um, I, I want to talk about uh, what inspired me to talk about this topic. Um, I, I, I I posted something on uh, Threads yesterday uh, that uh, that inspired this episode. I posted that I love all Star Wars. I'm a big Star Wars fan, if in case you didn't know. But I, I you know I wanted to post the Star Wars post to connect with more Star Wars fans, right? Like uh, I really love Threads for that, and it's it's they're very good at connecting you with with people of like mind, um, and and similar interests. So I, I posted uh, that I love all Star Wars, and that my favorite. Um, movie in the sequel trilogy is uh, uh, having a brain fart. The Last Jedi. Sorry, The Last Jedi. Um, uh, so I love all Star Wars, and my favorite film in the sequel trilogy is The Last Jedi. Again, with the intention of of connecting with more Star Wars fans. Now I knew that inevitably I would get some kickback because there are fans that just disagree with everything, especially in the Star Wars world. It, 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 there is a certain um, you know faction in the Star Wars fandom that's that can be pretty toxic. Um, and so what ends up happening is that somebody commented on on that post. Um, uh, yeah, really, really kind of um uh, uh assumptive first of all and and uh judgy <laughs> right and and uh very entitled like like th- this entitlement and feeling like his his, th- his opinion was was the right opinion about star wars and presenting that opinion as if it were actual fact and reality right right uh, he, his his retort was something to the extent that tr- a true star wars fans a, a true star wars fan knows that the, the the original trilogy is 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 the only real trilogy and the only real star wars everything after disney was uh, you know junk and and you know disney really ruined what star wars means um Okay, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not unsympathetic to his opinion. I, like, obviously, he's dissatisfied with it, and, and I feel bad for him for something that, you know, he I, I think he actually really loves, although he doesn't communicate it that way. But, uh, you know, there, he has some part of him that loves Star Wars but is very dissatisfied with the, the existing Star Wars world. Um, and, and so there's so much conflict between reality um, uh, as far as like actual reality and the Star Wars that, that is being produced and being released, uh, you know, right now. 
um, um, especially post Disney era, and the Star Wars that he knows and that he wants to be real and to be actual Star Wars. And so this conflict um, arises, right? And so that got me thinking: Well, why is why do people why do people feel like their thing is the right thing and that that actual reality um, when it when when it doesn't align with what they want or what they believe to be um, true and right? Um, that that it just like there's there's no there's no um, yeah, well, there's 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 no the uh, negotiation there. Uh, negotiation is not the right word, um, but you know what I mean. Like there, there's no there's no um, acceptance that okay, this is this is my subjective truth and my subjective beliefs about Star Wars um, and versus objective truth and objective reality, right? There's there's no there's no kind of halfway halfway point there, right? Um, and so so I got to thinking about this, and and again, like so many people behave and think this way and i i really i really firmly believe that it is because of the internet and i've mentioned before in the past that the internet has has created um you know ha, has programmed us this in, in us this compulsion um to just share our opinions whenever we want and share them in a way that they are actually fact right because because there's not not real discussion happening on especially on the social feeds there's no real discussion there's no thoughtful conversation it's just share um you know what you're going to share and you get immediate validation and so you know it's it's kind of programmed this compulsion of 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 um you know making us more opinionated um and believing that opinion and th those opinions are fact and as a result it creates a lot of conflict and so like what what is happening? Like, what, what, what mechanism is going on in our minds that is creating this this dissonance and and all this conflict in 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 the, the modern world and modern society? So um, let's start with that. Let's start with that. The mechanism, right? Right. Um, our our minds are a beautiful thing. I always talk about that. And and you know we uh, like I like to think about our brains and our minds as uh, you know the the best supercomputer ever. Right. Like the there's no supercomputer that that humans have built that can compare to what our minds can do. And and so you know coming into the physical world, you know, when we're born, our minds take in data, our minds take in information through, through stimuli, you know, the stimuli around us, um, uh, through our senses, and then our brains kind of um, categorize that and make sense of it and weave a narrative about the external world so that we can better function in the external world, right? That's kind of the adaptive, simplis in simpl simplistic terms, that's kind of the adaptive mechanism, right? Our brains are, are here to make sense of the world, or the external reality, around us so that we can better function in it. Now, fast forward to the to the modern age and the internet age where we now have smart devices and, and we have e immediate access to um, information. Um, our, our brains are now exposed to that, that much more, well, infinite amount more information and, and stimuli. And so our brains are trying to make sense of it. Um, the thing is, not all information <laughs> in virtual reality uh, can be trusted as far as as far as lining up with actual reality we know we know that that, that uh, you know especially social media there it, it, it is easy it's easy to to perpetuate and put out um, false information and false narratives, um, you know, for for personal gain or whatever, right? Whatever reason, but but there's so much there's so much um, uh, false stuff out there, false data, false information um, that it becomes difficult to discern between the two. And what what ends up happening with the exposure to to this this new virtual information is that um, if we're not aware of it, the the algorithm will then give you more of what your neuroses um, desire, right? Like if, if you are kind of bent towards being a little neurotic, um, then the algorithm is gonna gonna reinforce that. It's gonna well, it's gonna validate the those neuroses. It's gonna reinforce it and it's gonna give you more of it to amplify it and magnify it. And so it just gets worse and worse and worse. And so we're taking in this information that's that's that feels very validating and uh, from from the internet, the the virtual reality. It feels very validating. It feels right. It makes us feel good because we get the thumbs up and we get to give a thumbs up. And and so that starts to shape 
uh, in our mind what we think is reality. It starts to shape um, and influence the narrative. Remember, before the internet, before smart devices, the narratives that we weave were largely um, influenced and created by the world, the external reality around us. And, and of course, you know, um, the, the communities that we're a part of, our, our friends, our families, things like that, but largely of the external reality around us. Um, now that we have this exposure to virtual reality and, and, and inundated by a, a lot of false and, and untrue information um, that, that uh, is fed to us by an algorithm that really, if we're, again, unconscious of it, is, is feeding our neuroses, then that now becomes what we're creating our, our narratives from. Right, where we're, these these virtual and often false realities are influencing the narratives that we have about the world, and then what happens from there is that when when the virtual realities that we have bought into and believe is actual our actual reality, um, when those things don't align with what's what's in actual reality, right? What's in physical reality, um, then there's a great a tremendous amount of dissonance. Right, and of course, with dissonance comes conflict. As in, as in this Star Wars fan that commented on my post yesterday, uh, there's obviously a conflict between uh, between what I believe is Star Wars and what he believes is Star Wars. And instead of meeting me halfway or finding a middle ground, um, uh, he what what in leaving that comment, like it, I don't know, it's the unconscious hope of trying to rework and 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 mold. The, the external reality to his to, to align up um, and and to be aligned with his own internal narratives right and, and you know same thing happens with with any I mean you know Star Wars is, is pretty um, innocuous as far as the topic but it, it, you know, with, in terms of like um, political views and 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 religious views it can get really really um, polarized and 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 um, the discourse just doesn't happen it just doesn't happen because of the dissonance and well discourse doesn't happen and, and conversation doesn't happen uh, because they we can immediately go back to the internet and social media and get validation um from uh, of our of our world views right uh, e even if it that those world views don't align with the real external reality <laughs> we can go to virtual reality and get validation of, of those worldviews and so um you know the the stuff that's happening online i mean we all we already see conflict online and and how how um ugly people can be in comment threads um but then that that's now coming off of line and, and people are starting to behave that um act out um offline and in, in actual reality because of because of the narratives that that uh that are in their their narratives that have been influenced by the virtual and and often false realities i.e uh, the example of course is the the militia that's making threats towards uh, fema employees here in western north carolina um, when, during the relief efforts um and so yeah 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 the the exposure um, to the stimuli and information online is very very detrimental. Um, there's no there's no there's no way around the, that that fact. All right. Uh, there's even you know discussions and, and I don't have the information and and the research papers done, but there are there are discussions and research being done on the effects of social media on uh, kids. Right on on kids and teenagers who are who are you know uh, haven't really developed their fully fully de developed their identities, but they have all this stimuli and data coming in, and who knows what's true, who knows what's not true. Like there's there's no sifting and sorting in any of it, and, and so so the the young um, are, are very vulnerable to to this uh, to this happening, um, and you know we see a lot of kind of mental mental health issues as a result because they're the what they think is reality having their faces on. Uh, in their mobile devices and on social media at all times, uh, what they what they bought in as reality, which is only virtual reality, it doesn't line up with actual reality. Then, then, yeah, then of course it's going to create a lot of mental illness, right? And again, we just go, you know, our, the the compulsion is to just go back to um, the device and and back to the internet because it validates and and uh, and it reinforces uh, those worldviews and those neuroses. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's a real issue. And, and again, as we talked about in the last episode, number one, 
the first step is getting uh, 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 gaining awareness of this and that's why that's why i want to talk about today i want you to be aware of this mechanism so that you can see it happening in yourself um, especially if if you're finding yourself in a lot of conflict and and disagreement right yeah disagreement's okay um, but uh, but understand understanding where it comes from allows us to kind of to to have a a healthier um, uh, discourse around the disagreements as opposed to again running back for for uh, to the internet for for validation all right. All right. So now you know the mechanisms and, and why this stuff is happening and potentially why you have more conflict. What do you do? The first step is, well, of course, awareness and know that this is happening. And, and, and then step away step away right unplug unplug i know i know uh, you know i've known uh, a lot of people now that that have done you know uh, device and social media and internet detoxes and it's a real thing you really have to do it uh, you really have to do it especially if you if you're just kind of becoming aware of of these mechanisms and of what's happening um you got to take a step back because it, like uh, and understand take a step back and understand how much influence um the this data and information that that uh, that you you're getting from the internet and social media is really having on your life right and, and accept that and so step away step away from uh, from from the social feed step away uh, re really resist the urge to doom scroll um and you know I, i've done this for years and is that like don't wake up in the morning and immediately go to social media right don't immediately check your phone even um and that, that's a that's a great first step but as a whole if you can do a detox like a one week detox from the internet you can start to kind of get gr regrounded back in actual reality right actual external reality um and and look at external reality and how much of what you previously have bought into from the internet is actual physical external reality right um but that can only be done if you detox right if you detox so unplug unplug is the next step and so and, and after that after you've you know you've taken enough time uh, and and off the feeds and you're ready to get back on because you know it's hard not to because uh, i mean even for me uh, it's really one of the primary ways i engage with the external world off the mountain because i don't live in, in civilization um so so when you get back online really look at it objectively right because what you you were thinking before and things that you were buying into before was subjective so really try to look at a, a look at it objectively um and and think about the external reality that you were able to kind of get regrounded in uh, during your detox and compare that to the reality that you're buying into online and if there's any dissonance between the two realize that the dissonance is created by the information that you're consuming on the social feeds and this is this is where again that that level of awareness is really really important because if you're not aware of it you can't you can't guard yourself mentally from these false um uh, uh narratives and this false information that's online that's that's influencing your then world view right so so you have to really raise your level of awareness um so when you again when you go back online after your detox um take take what you know to to after having been regrounded in an actual external reality and compare it to to the things that you're seeing online and if if there's dissonance understand that that, that dissonance is a result of um the exposure and the information that and the stimuli that you're getting from the online world the online world and then from there you can just be more intentional and purposeful um uh, with with what you consume online and and develop your strength and wherewithal again to to keep your mental guard up against those things that that when you see and start to feel like oh i agree with that uh, especially something very polarized and 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 uh potentially um could could create conflict right right um uh, you know really really raise your your level of awareness and put up your mental guards and say okay you know that 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 piece of information i think is is calling to my 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 neuroses than it is to my logical the logical side of my brain and and so i'm gonna i'm gonna I, even if even if I decide to take a look at that piece of content or that piece of information, I will put a mental block, a mental guard on myself to know that that is just internet information and, and virtual reality. And, and it may not be until I verify it and vet it, it may not be actual reality, right? 
I know it's a, it's it's a long it's kind of a tough process and and it's something that you have to train yourself to do over time. It's not going to happen immediately, uh, but the, there is there is I think a, a need an important need for us to 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 really program ourselves and develop the ability to recognize um, well to be able to sift and sort through um, the the stimuli and the data that we're we're taking in from social media because um, obviously as we talked about today um, it can it can make a huge huge impact and it can it can greatly influence um, your world view and then you, and you can take that out into the real actual reality and into the external world and you know yeah if it's not if it's not a good view then then it could create a lot of conflict for you so um yeah yeah so those two things um obviously well three things raise your awareness about what's happening um then unplug do a detox and then when you get back online understand that they're you know really examine the difference between actual external reality and and virtual reality which a lot of a lot of the virtual stuff that that you're you're um exposed to online may or may not be true right may or may not be true okay so that's it um hopefully that helps hopefully that makes sense leave me a comment in the comment section below um of this video if you have any thoughts um you can email me now i think on on the podcast i don't know where the actual button is but there might be an email me button um on the podcast if you have any thoughts i would love to hear it um and maybe discuss some of some of your thoughts on in a future episode but that that would be really appreciated other than that um i still am doing fundraising for the the relief efforts here in western north carolina uh, i'll leave the gofundme link in the show notes of this episode in the description of this uh video uh, this YouTube video. And uh, yeah, also one last thing I am going to be doing, well, I'm, this is the second one, um, I did a, uh, a online, an online um, uh, virtual open mic um, uh, as a fundraiser for, for relief efforts here um, in North Carolina. I'm going to do it again in uh, a, a week from Friday, a week from tomorrow, as of the release of this episode. So uh, tune into that. It's on Facebook. If you want to participate, if you're a, if you're a musician, um, we'd love to have you um, donate a few, uh, you know, your time really, and 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 a few a few songs uh, so that, that people. Well, yeah, it's a fundraiser, <laughs> right? Right. So it's virtual open mic on uh, on Facebook. I'll, I'll make another announcement um, in the next episode for that. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's keep a, keep a look out, look out for it, and then of course connect with me on on the socials. I'll, I'll leave the links in the show notes. Uh, of this episode, but uh, yeah, thanks, thanks. If if this topic, or the last ask, if if the 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 conversation today, if if it really kind of uh, got you thinking, um, and and if you think that it could help somebody else, if you if if, if it could help somebody in your life, um, gain perspective on how they're using social media and the, the potential negative effects that that it can have on life and on their lives. Please share this with them. Please share this episode with them. Um, uh, you know, like we really got to get this information out there, so so people are more aware of what's actually happening in our minds um, uh, because of our exposure to uh, the virtual world. Right? All right? Okay. So that's it. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and go. Have a great rest of your day. Have a great weekend. We'll catch you next week with a fresh new episode. So until then, be well, be safe. I'll see you in the next episode.